In this video, I will share with you how people have stole from me and my businesses over $200,000 in the last 10 years. And I will give you five tips how to deal with theft in your business. In 2010, I was flipping a house. I bought brand new pressure washer, six five gallon buckets of paint to paint the entire house, whole bunch of other tools. We had pressure washer, we have spray painter. So the house was brand new and pretty good neighborhood. So we parked it all in, I uh, opened the house, uh, put all my equipment, paint everything inside. Next morning came in and they busted the door in the back and pretty much everything was gone. And it's the first time in my life I'm like, man, I understand the pressure washer was like five days old. I understand the sprayer, but they stole all my paint. The paint was like $800 worth uh, to paint the entire house. Five gallons bucket. Who steals five gallon buckets of paints? crazy what are you gonna do with that i remember literally going to the store and spending a couple thousand dollars uh, to get everything back so i can finish the house five years later in my gutter business right here in my warehouse outside of my warehouse i have gutter trailers stolen right in front of us funny story there is we have camera pointing right at it and one week before trailer was stolen uh, subscription ended it was yearly subscription for drop cam drop cam i absolutely hate you uh, you're the worst camera company in history so what happened is drop cam subscription canceled we got email that you know uh, subscription cancel it's one of those cameras that records you know in a cloud whatever that means somewhere in the sky they store for the last 15 days all the footage i paid my subscription i renew it I got confirmation email that you know four days prior trailer was stolen. So I got email saying we we'll receive your payment. Your subscription is renewed. Four days later, I come in and the trailer is gone. I'm like, oh no problem. I'm gonna go check the camera footage. Look at the camera. So the camera, if you log in on your phone, it's always you know in live. You can always see what's happening. But uh, you have to go on a computer to actually go back. You know. 15 days to see what happened a couple days ago. So I go to the computer and it was not recording. So I called Dropcam and they told me, Dimitri, we apologize. It's a glitch in the system. It was supposed to be renewed, but it did not renew. So I did have con a confirmation email from Dropcam that subscription was renewed, but trailer was gone. 30 days later, I found the trailer in St. Paul, Minneapolis, next to the apartment complex. It was fully wrapped. So my business name and the phone number was on it so management called me say hey we have this trailer park here for a month so we went there uh, met the management and I asked him hey guys I see that you have a camera can we please go and see who dropped them off I'm like sure so we're going in the basement of this uh, apartment complex with the security to look at the footage guess what they only record for 30 days and it was 31st day so the, I missed it by one day and the, the, the first day of that camera recording the trailer was already there. So, and it was the next day after it was stolen. So I'm like, I was just running out of luck. So $12,000 completely gone. Uh, the next theft was six months after that, two work vans right outside of our building. Uh, we, we have four full-time repair guys working every single day. Uh, each van had a lot of you know, nail compressor. We have Milwaukee drills. Like, I mean, each uh, van had at least 10 batteries. I mean, all very expensive hand tools. So both of them were completely wiped out, $15,000 or so uh, in each van worth of equipment compressors, everything from the tape measure to some fancy stuff that, you know, my guys were using, everything was gone. 2018 was absolutely worst of the worst year for me. My accountant, my lawyer, everybody around me said, Dimitri, you're just a bad luck. We've never seen, my, my accountant at the time told me uh, she was working uh, for like five, six businesses at a time. And she said, I've never met any business owner who <laughs> was going through so much let me share. So we have an uh, office girl that we hired through temp agency stealing from us $4,700. Like, I did not do this, Dimitri. I know you're pointing everything at me, and, you know, but I'm sitting here... Cool. $4,700. She paid her credit card with our debit card. Pretty much was scheduling. 
her payments like $22, $23, you know, per day. It was very crazy, very sophisticated. I didn't have Capital One card and I saw in a bank statement, Capital One transactions like 18, 19, 22 dollars. Like she was very creative. She hacked into our PayPal, sent the money via email pretty much. Then she wrote a couple checks to her ex-boyfriend, paying him that back. And within, everything happened within 30 days. So $4,500 uh, was stolen within 30 days by 20-year-old temp agency. That's one. Second one was uh, two sales guys that were working for me. Very shady people. One of them, uh, six months down the road, got felony charged. He stole over $50,000. I turned him to the police. I testify in court. He got what he deserved. But another guy with him, they're, and they're like father figures to me. They were my father's age. So they're double my age, very mature guys, been in the industry for years. But what was happening in the summertime, both of them started the company behind my back. And it was very shady stuff, what they did. Uh, I ended up getting called from my receptionist at the time, Amy. She told me, Dmitry, I'm sorry to tell you this, but those guys are trying to recruit your people. They try to recruit me. They already have a business. Here's the name of the business. Uh, they're very shady. So they stole a lot of leads from me. As a matter of fact, I canceled their email subscription. I logged in and I've seen emails. When they were going to our leads to do our jobs, right? Uh, they would give them estimate, but then on the back end, when they uh, they would send their crew do the work and they send invoice from their company and got paid that way. Some homeowners reply to them say, "Hey, I did see estimate from Storm Group Roofing, but invoice from." Pro America is the name of the company. They set up a, a home expo booth at the time while working for me, knowing that I'm gonna be at that expo. Very shady. Uh, as a matter of fact, we were going on a big, big project. We were bidding on a couple hundred thousand dollar project here in Lutzen, Minnesota. And while I was driving, you know, with one of them, he was on the phone with another one. Like actually, when I hooked in, the, uh, when I opened their emails, because it was company emails, I've seen the correspondence. He literally was in my car next to me, emailing the other guy who still was working for me, saying, "Well, I'm with Dimitri now. We just bid on this project. Cannot talk to you for the next couple hours." They were at the time designing business cards or something. When I read that email, it's like, what is happening? You feel cheated. It was it was horrible experience, but it happens. But the worst of the worst thing what happened that summer, it was very, very stressful for me because I did not know where the money was going. What happened is, and this is the shadiest, stupidest theft I've ever seen in my life. One of them was going to QuickBooks because he was allowed to, he was like my right hand. You ever um, let snake close to you, like almost like on your neck? He was that snake. So he was going to QuickBooks. He was marking invoices on each job. So if we would finish a job and let's say, you know, he needs to get paid Friday. So instead of going collecting the payment, maybe homeowner didn't pay or he could meet them or whatever the case was, I could, to this day, I don't understand why he was doing it. He would go on QuickBooks, mark the job paid, pretty much forgiven that to the homeowner, like $5,000, right? Was getting, uh, con uh, was getting commission on the job. So because, you know, every time we collect the payment, we pay them money. So now I'm paying him $500 on a $5,000 check. But the problem was we never actually collected the money. So, and that was happening June, July, I believe 2016. And then what happened later that year, literally I have a woman walking into my office in February and saying, uh, are you Dmitry? I'm like, yes. He, she's like, well, you did my job this, you know, last summer and I never paid you. Here's the check. So this is why I still believe in humanity, that people still will do right. When I saw the check and I remember how I felt in that June and I knew what happened and I look in right away, I knew who the salesperson was and how it was collected as paid. I mean, it was just nasty, crazy stuff. But again, that guy has a felony charges. His name is Steven Adenthal. Have no problem mentioning Scumbag's name. If you out there, never ever hire Steven Adenthal to do anything. He stole from his own church. His church sued him. I sued him. Uh, I have two judgment, uh, judgments against him. He owes me 
like fifteen thousand dollars right now i never saw one penny back and god bless you you're a good man so we have equipment camera gear like i have very expensive stuff stolen from me many many times you know maybe employees milking their times trying to get paid for stuff they shouldn't get paid as a business owner you have to be ready for theft because sooner or later it will happen here's the five tips how to deal with the theft because you have to develop very thick skin on your body because you will have to deal with it sooner or later we all are the uh, the bigger your business becomes the more opportunities for people to attack it to take advantage of you you just have to prepare for it here's my five tips how to deal with the theft so number one always remember wh where did you start w what helps me keep my sanity a lot of times uh, every time something like that happens, sometimes you come in, like I remember the day where $15,000 of tools were st stolen from our vans. And my guys are furious. They want to get in the fist fight. They want to find them. And I get it. I want it too. Like, I trust me, I want to find the uh, person who stole from me. Like, no question about it. We have $2,500 computer stolen from my backseat in my neighborhood. Trust me. I feel, you know, like bad about it. But... I always remember where I started. You know, in six years ago, I have one vehicle. I didn't have even a business. I was broke. I borrowed two thousand dollars to uh, rent first town home for my family. So when you remember where you started, when you remember the humble beginnings, okay, they stole fifteen thousand from you. You know, I I can rebuild them. I hope they will make it count for them. I hope it'll come back to them because again, I think I know who stole my gutter business and. Uh, the guy who I think stole it actually got jail time for something different. Actually just messaged me recently again. He already have a jail history. He actually was in my building, uh, in the gutter business. So I'm pretty positive it was him, have no proof, but I also know he just got out of jail again. So little things like that, I think they always will get what they deserve. What goes around comes around. But always remember where you started, don't let it affect, you know, if, if people stole from you, it's good because you had something. I know it hurts, but remember the time where you didn't have it in the first place. Number two, don't stop selling, don't stop working. I see a lot of guys, um, you know, they stop everything. They're like, oh, my trailer is gone, my tools are gone. And I remember when my guys are like, Dimitri, how can you be so cool? Why, why are you not pissed? Trust me, guys, when I say it. And if you work for me, you actually experience it. I'm the calmest guy in the room when people actually steal from me. Why? Because it's one thing that I cannot control. I will be more pissed about my employee not sweeping in the floor or being late five minutes to work like that pisses me off because I can control that. I can come in and say, guys, why there's a mess in the warehouse? Why are you guys, how can you work like this? I can control that situation. There is nothing I can control about theft. You know, they took what they took. You have a job to do. Don't stop the work. Because you, the sooner you get back to work, the sooner you get back to selling, the sooner you will buy everything back. That's just how it goes. You know, write your losses, keep moving forward, you know, do file a police report, be proactive if you can to find it, but it's a loss. It's a business loss and your business will lose something. I mean, uh, your vehicles lose values, you know, stuff happens. This is just one of those things. Worst thing could happen, you know, someone could die and you would be dealing with that. So it's not the worst uh, thing that can happen to you. Get back to work as soon as you can. Number three, don't let it affect your faith in people. I know it's hard to trust people when you know you have your sales reps stealing from you, your office people stealing from you. I've been there many, many times, but here's the deal. You know, yes, there's bad people, but there's also good people. When you let bad people affect how you make decisions, you will make bad decisions too. Right now I have two businesses at the same building two amazing teams i trust every single person as a matter of fact in both businesses people know where the checkbook is and i firmly believe the thief will always find the way how to steal you know like you can you might as well put thousand dollars on the desk and just keep it there <laughs> because even if you try to hide it put it in safe the most sophisticated uh, thefts happening you know because people get creative don't stop trusting people 
What's his option now? Never hire another sales rep ever again? No, you can't do it. That's not even an option. So you not believe in people, it's not an option. Be the good one, write your loss, deal with a thief. Like I have people literally walking in handcuffs in my office. I will press charges. I will testify in court. And I did twice. Those people got what they deserve. But I still gonna trust everyone else. You know, if you wanna go that route, you know, there's nothing I can change. One girl who worked for me decided to pay her traffic uh, tickets. It was like $250, thought I will not find out, and I did, and fired her immediately. She did not tell me. Another one got into drugs and abusive relationship, and she was getting paid like 1,000 bucks a week, like three or four years ago, and she was started writing checks to herself on top of that. So little things like that, and you know, I didn't press charges, but I just let them go. Sometimes you trust people, they abuse the trust, you let them go, that's it. But you still have to trust your, their replacement. I mean, sometimes they have to earn the trust, but still, uh, don't lose your faith in humanity. Number four, avoid your temptation to build crazy policies. I see it happens all the time. You know, someone steals from you or, you know, now you want to be precautious, you want to make sure it'll never happen again. Well, guess what? That's what happens to big, big corporations like Wells Fargo and that's why all the policies are in place. Because someone did something and now we all have to struggle. Well, you know, what's your option? I can never give my employees a card so they don't go and ship few items to my students now. You know, what's the option? Like I have Amber and Amber ships, you know, like 10, 20 packages a day and I have to trust her with a card. You know, what's good does it do to me to create a policy where I'm not doing it because other person, you know, before her, took my card that I gave her to do, uh, you know, to pay for a company expense and she paid her uh, traffic tickets with my card or her credit card. She abused the trust. That's one level of theft. But okay. when you get over $1,000, that's another level. What do you want me not to trust new employee? You can't do that. So you cannot create a policy that will affect your business in general and it will be not be fair to other people. I mean, you have to be precautious, but don't go crazy and don't think that people will just justify it. You know, if your sales rep stole the check from you, there's nothing you can do about it. There's no policy you can put in place that the next sales guy will not cash his check. I mean, what can you do? There's not much you can do. Create a policy that your sales guy is not allowed to take checks from the homeowners. Good luck with that policy. How is that going to help your business? So don't create crazy policies. And number five, the last tip I have for you. Please don't change yourself. No theft will happen. I know it will affect your brain, uh, but don't let it affect your personality. Don't let it get in your head. I see some business owners out there once you start getting screwed in the business and people do shady stuff for you, like sooner or later, some people, and I, I've seen it, I've seen it in my lifetime where people just start doing shady stuff themselves and they start justifying their actions. They're like, well, everybody's stealing from me. Why I cannot like screw insurance company or, you know, I've been, you know, cheated so many times. I'm going to cheat a little bit too. Don't let it affect who you are. Yes, people will steal from you. Just be honest. Be honest with your employees. Be honest with your customers. Even if everybody's stealing from you and it's a crazy world out there and everybody just go out against you, you feel like it's not fair, but you be fair. You be the good one and people will see it. You will have huge success. Never cheat, never steal yourself, no matter how many times you have been cheated. Those are my five tips how to deal with theft in your business. Hope it helps. Comment below, share your story, and also maybe give a tip that I missed. How did you deal with the theft? I wanna hear from you. Give me one of those. If you like this content, I'll make more videos and share more of my stories in the future. See you guys in the next video.